हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू क्लास इलेवन फिजिक्स वी आर स्टडिंग चैप्टर थ्री दैट इज मोशन इन ए स्ट्रेट लाइन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी एंड फोकस ऑन द वर्ड इंस्टेंटेनियस बेस्ड ऑन दैट वी विल सी व्हाट इज इंस्टेंटेनियस स्पीड और वेलोसिटी व्हाट इज इंस्टेंटेनियस एक्सिलरेशन फर्स्ट इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी विल सी द थियरिटिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द वर्ड इंस्टेंटेनियस स्पीड और वेलोसिटी एंड एक्सिलरेशन then we will understand the concept clearly by seeing some numericals okay i hope you have seen the previous videos very carefully when the value of a quantity changes it takes some time so if you want to find out the rate of change in that value you are finding or you are using average rate of change right now let us understand this for example if any object is heated right and the temperature of that object increases from 30 degree celsius to 75 degree celsius right and for that it takes 5 minutes so you can see there is an initial value of temperature initial value of time final value of temperature final value of time so if i ask you to find out the average rate of change in temperature so how shall you find for that what you will do you will find the ratio first of all change in temperature i am taking capital t and change in time i am taking small t clear here we shall use capital t and for time we will to take small t now to find change remember this delta symbol in physics means change okay now see change in temperature so what shall we do 75 minus 30 upon change in time that is 5 minus 0 now you see 75 minus 30 is 45 and 5 minus 0 is 5 if you cancel it you will get 1 and 9 so our final answer along with unit if i write it is 9 degrees celsius upon 1 minute clear so this 9 degrees celsius per minute is the average remember why i am re repeating this word average because average change in temperature is totally dependent on the initial and final values this were the initial values and these were the final values now you see the interval the interval we are taking is from 0 to 5 so we know only about the 0 minutes value and 5 minutes value now what if i ask you that what was the rate of change in temperature exactly at the third minute will you be able to answer by only using the average change in temperature why i am telling because in order to find out the change in temperature at particular instant average concept will not work because we are knowing only about the average we don't know about any instantaneous interval clear so that is why average concept is not used over here let us see the same thing in case of speed or velocity now in discussion of average velocity and average speed we saw that average velocity in any time interval gives information about how fast an object has moved over a given time interval suppose a particle is moving in uh, one dimension and its position uh, let us assume that at time t its position is x and at time t plus delta t the position has now changed to x plus delta x this is about how time has changed and this is about how position of that object has changed clear now we can get the average velocity of this particle by using the formula what can be the formula final minus initial so you see the position change is x plus delta x that is final minus initial over here also t plus delta t minus initial time t 
here x and x will be cancelled t and del minus t will be cancelled so we will get delta x by delta t but remember this is the average velocity that we are finding we do not have the information about the object's velocity at different instant of time during this interval right because during this time interval the velocity of the particle might have increased or decreased but listen very carefully it is clear that by giving smaller and smaller interval of time to a particle to change its velocity we get more and more accurate information about its velocity right so what we will do we will reduce this time interval you see this time interval we will reduce this time interval near to zero reducing the time interval in this case almost zero not exactly zero but near to zero we may get the velocity at particular instant right now how to express this right so we will be expressing this as limit delta t we cannot put is equals to 0 but that is why we are putting a small arrow and putting 0 that means that change in interval of time is almost 0 but not 0 right and then we will be denoting this delta x by delta t so whatever we are doing we are doing in this ratio only clear so instantaneous velocity v at any instant of time is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 delta x by delta t and that will turn into this delta if put limit will turn into dx by dt clear so ultimately the instantaneous velocities formula you got is v equals to dx by dt right and what is this dx by dt called dx by dt is also called derivative of x with respect to t now let us see what is instantaneous acceleration okay now what is acceleration it is change in velocity with respect to time clear so now let us also assume that in time t1 velocity was v1 at time t2 velocity was v2 so what is the average acceleration it is v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1 that is nothing but delta v by delta t change in velocity upon change in time again applying the same concept it is at the interval it is at the interval of time right but this average acceleration will not give any information about acceleration or change in velocity at any instant of time so for that what we shall do again the same concept we shall take limit delta t tends to 0 in acceleration as well right so in that case the average acceleration will turn into acceleration a limit delta t tends to 0 delta v upon delta t now that will convert into this limit delta t tends to 0 we have kept so delta will convert into dv by dt so ultimately what is acceleration a equals to dv by dt clear so this is similar as v equals to dx by dt but here velocity or speed was change in position with respect to time acceleration is change in velocity with respect to time as we are finding instantaneous we have taken limit delta t tends to 0 that is why this delta has converted into d small d now acceleration how it is related to position let us see i will say we have just found that acceleration a equals to dv by dt 
बट वी ऑल्सो नो दैट वी इक्वल्स टू डी एक्स बाय डी टी सो इफ वी पुट इफ यू कीप डी बाय डी टी सेम बट इंस्टीड ऑफ वेलोसिटी वी वी पुट डी एक्स बाय डी टी वॉट इट विल बी द न्यूमिनेटर विल रिमेन विथ न्यूमिनेटर डिनोमिनेटर विल गो इन टू डिनोमिनेटर सो इट विल बी डी बाय डी टी ऑफ डी एक्स अपॉन डी टी सो अल्टीमेटली दिस विल टर्न इन टू डी स्क्वेर एक्स अपॉन वर इयर टू टाइम्स डी टी सो इट इज डी टी स्क्वेर सो इंस्टेंटेनियस एक्सिलरेशन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कनेक्ट और रिलेट एक्सिलरेशन इंस्टेंटेनियस एक्सिलरेशन विथ वेलोसिटी एंड टाइम यू विल हैव टू यूज दिस फॉर्म्यूला एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इंस्टेंटेनियस वेलोसिटी विथ पोजिशन एंड टाइम हियर इट इज वेलोसिटी एंड टाइम सो इट इज रिलेटेड लाइक दिस ए इक्वल्स टू डी बाई डी डी बट इफ पोजिशन इज गिवेन एंड दे हैव आस्ट यू टू फाइंड आउट एक्सिलरेशन यू विल यूज दिस फॉर्म्यूला सो इंस्टेंटेनियस एक्सिलेशन इक्वल्स टू हियर डी स्क्वेर एक्स दैट इज position change in position and change in time clear so acceleration can be represented in two ways if velocity is given we can represent by this formula if position and time is given we can represent by this formula that means acceleration is the double derivative acceleration is the double derivative of position right this is single derivative here we are taking derivation or differentiation two times so double derivative of position clear now let us see instantaneous velocity numerical here i have given the formulas of instantaneous velocity and acceleration also the differentiation formula that you have already studied in the previous lecture is d of any function that is x raised to n by dt is n x raised to n minus 1 suppose a function is there whose power is also there so that power will become the coefficient and then that power will be subtracted with 1 okay now let us see this with a practical example suppose the position of the object is given by a, the formula x is equals to t square plus 2 meter this simply means that the position is directly related to the time now we have to find out the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 3 second we we have to find out instantaneous velocity that is v equals to d of x by dt right now here what is d of x that is t square plus 2 now always remember that whenever there are more than one term we will have to differentiate it separately so we will do d by dt of t square then d by dt of 2 now according to the formula t square x raised to n the power becomes the coefficient so here the power is 2 it will become the coefficient 2 t then coefficient my uh, the power minus 1 so 2 minus 1 over here d by dt of any specific number will always result into 0 any random number which is without the variable this will always be 0 i am writing it is without variable so its differentiation will always be 0 so here we have the final answer 2t raised to 2 minus 1 that is nothing but 1 now we have got the formula of instantaneous velocity now let us put the value so write down at t equals to 3 second the instantaneous velocity will be 2 into 3 raised to 1. that is 2 threes are 6 meter per second so this is how you will solve the sum of instantaneous velocity another very easy example let us take again we will take a similar question position of the object is given by x equals to 3t cube 
find the instantaneous velocity and instantaneous acceleration at t equals to 2 second so this is how by this equation position and time are related we have to find out instantaneous velocity that is v and instantaneous acceleration that is a okay so now let us start with instantaneous velocity so v equals to d of x by dt over here d by dt of let us put what is x it is 3 t cube okay now using the formula d by dt of x raised to n here you can see it is 3 t cube so 3 will remain as it is the coefficient and we will do d by dt of t cube so 3 into t cube so 3 will become the coefficient over here and t will be there as it is then power minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 so ultimately it is 9 t raised to 2 now we will put t equals to 2 as we have to find out instantaneous acceleration at 2 seconds right so at t equals to 2 second instantaneous velocity will be 9 into 2 square and 9 into 2 square is nothing but 9 for the 36 meter per second so this is the instantaneous velocity now what about instantaneous acceleration we have to find out the derivation of the velocity so let us see how it is done now we know that v was instantaneous velocity was 9 t square and now we are finding instantaneous acceleration so the formula is a equals to dv by dt right so that is nothing but derivation of velocity with respect to time velocity value is 9 t square now again as i said the coefficient original coefficient will come out and we are doing d by dt of t square so what will be that t square from this formula 2 will come outside t raised to 2 minus 1 and that is 9 to the 18 t raised to 2 minus 1 is only t okay so instantaneous acceleration at t equals to 2 second will be a equals to 18 into 2 we have put the value over here so a equals to 36 meter per second square so exactly at 2 second the acceleration was 36 meter per second square so this is how just on the basis of the position you can get instantaneous velocity by doing one time derivation and instantaneous acceleration by doing two times derivation clear for practice i will be giving you few more questions in that you will have to find out instantaneous velocity and instantaneous acceleration